I'm uh, I gotta get my my stuff together a little bit, but maybe I don't. Like basically, the whole point of this is that I want to make more of these, and and so I figured that this is the time to just start um, sharing it with people. Um, yes, and. Oh my God, we're really excited that you're going to record it because on Sunday, that's what our, what our, we have it like tri, tra, trash and recycle day. Oh, that's nice. It. That's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to, we're going to teach that. So oh, show us. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to ask people, I don't like, I didn't, I don't think I said in the class that I was going to record. So I don't want to record anybody else. Okay. So I think what I'm going to try to do is get, <laughs> a YouTube length video of the class, but that's just me maybe because um, because I don't know that I want to record anybody else. Sure. But, but I, I'll try to get that up um, like today or tomorrow. Uh, oh, probably tomorrow, I think. Yeah, the class is late tonight. Don't, don't push it. <laughs> yeah, I think tomorrow because I, I got to see how people respond to, to this. The use of a sharp blade with cardboard makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to cut your finger doing that. <laughs> um, yes. So a Sunday, is that early in the day or are we still doing four o'clock? I wanna say it's four to 10. No, it's probably earlier in the day. It's probably like something oh, yeah, to six. Yeah, yeah. You said Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. it's the last day of fair, it's like a cleanup day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to check the hours. Mm -hmm. Yep. We uh Michael won first place. With my Wendy. Karma. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. I'm the best in class with my trash robot. Yeah. Shit. I still haven't brought my flag in. I gotta show you my flag. Oh right? yeah. Yes, please. So so this is very exciting. So so this is I love that this is like kind of a rural area in Oregon. Like this is now. <laughs> A, a thing you're oh my god wow that's amazing look at that you got some little serifs on your fonts there and everything oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah that's quite a font yeah and the anarchy a too yeah that's that's Fun great holy out. crap it's really happening oh my god remind me the name of the county you're in again i'm sorry josephine josephine, josephine county Josephine yeah. County Fair. You got a stroke block. I did. JosephineCountyFairgrounds.com. Yeah. Is that, is that where it's at? Um, fascinating. Grants yeah. Pass. Grants Pass. Yeah. You're in the Grants Pass metro area, such as it is. Well, we live in Merlin, but that is where the fair and you know the town is. Merlin is just like a 10 minute drive. It's on the outskirts. 1,600 yeah, people living in trailers. <laughs> yeah. You say 1,500? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Really that is rural. It's and an Grants answer. Pass isn't much of a city either, though, right? No, it's 30, 36,000. Okay. Um, and it's in a bowl, like a mountain, little mountain bowl. That has mm -hmm. the I five cut through it. That I goes. see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm always interested in people's geography, just because like we're trying to build this network, right? So like in the end, what the dream is is that you're on five, and then there's people driving up and down the five from mm -hmm. basically you know Canada to Mexico. Right. And yeah. you want to be having situations where people can like pick up and drop off stuff along that corridor. And then we start to connect all these places up. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this fair has been such an excellent connector. Mm -hmm. We found excellent. some awesome resources yesterday. We met a guy who is all about community, all about kids, super yeah. into education, and owns a scrapyard. So very much like a local Conroy ally, alloy, really like excited about everything we're doing. He's like, I've got a bunch of hybrid batteries. Oh, wow. I've got a bunch of this and that. You can just come down and he wants us to build websites for him. So, so we'll build a website okay. and trade that shit. And yeah, yeah. Really That's amazing. That. Yeah. yeah. He's a teacher. He was teaching at a high school, um, but he just finished that 
Am I and, going to work in a prison? Did I hear him saying? Well, he, like children's so, prison? Yeah, so a juvenile prison slash detention center. He's going He's going to be teaching them uh, machine shop skills. Oh. Cool. And so he has access to like a huge machine shop. So yeah. the first thing oh. I said, oh. trying to get a shredder for the precious plastics recycling. Yeah. And he was like, we have a machine that has all of those components. It's a seven-ton grinder. All you Good have to God. do is come, take it apart, and you can have all the parts, all the oh. electronics, all the rollers, all the parts. Right. So we're going to go do that for our organization. And then we got to talking, and he started telling us about all this other stuff. And we're like, we're trying to build mesh networks. We're right. trying to build robots. And right. he's like, I got everything for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So, where He's pretty close to you, like in your area? Yes. Yeah, like between Grants Pass and Merlin. Yeah. So close oh, to wow. in town. Yeah. OK. Yeah, we should see. I mean, if if maybe him and Comrade Alloy should be friends, I feel like the, if there's a way to connect those two, because I know Comrade Alloy uh, is like very, very, very motivated, but doesn't really have anybody that he works with out there to mm -hmm. like who actually gets any of this stuff. Like he's just right. yeah, it's 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 all. like like on the machining and welding and making things and the education. He's just like talking to a bunch of like republican Locals. farmers every day and trying yeah. to get them interested he's like trying to go straight from republican farmers to like communism right and like there's there's a whole lot of missing i keep trying to figure out how to connect him with university people out there or something mm -hmm. but if you yeah. could if we could start to if we could get scrapyard people to talk to each other and then start to build a social network Mm -hmm. Even if it's a network of two people, that's significant, I think. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're feeling so it out with this guy. He's former military. He seems like he still have might, might have some conservative values, but he's very disillusioned with his government. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to like find mm -hmm. that quick route from, from conservatism to yeah. class solidarity mm -hmm. that is already yeah, well, there for him. <laughs> he's experienced yeah. it to some level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, <clears throat> the thing that I've, I've had a lot of conversations with Comrade Alley about this, about like his his people out there. And like my belief is that conservatives want people to make stuff in America. Like they're mad that we make everything, that everything is made in China. Right. But, sure. like, whatever the reasons for that are, are like ultimately we need to be building stuff right here. And I feel like <clears throat> that's an easy sell. Like, you know, because that's that's what the Trump yeah, people yeah. sold to all these people. Like, we're going to put America back to work. And it was all lies. Mm -hmm, yeah, but mm -hmm, any, mm -hmm. you know, anybody who can figure out how to get people actually putting hard hats on and building stuff in this country Fun again, I think is going to have a lot of traction. One of the main companies making MAGA gear just got hit with like a four hundred thousand dollar FCC fine for putting "Made in the USA" over "Made in China" stickers. <laughs> That's amazing! Like literally, just putting it over the sticker. Pretty much, yes. Just yeah. relabeling it. Like, oh, wow. That's that's that ideology <laughs> yeah it's crazy and then you know i'm trying to imagine what it's like to work in these factories in china because if you look at alibaba you can see it's the same factories that sell the trump shit that sell the clinton shit and then mm. and they'll oh, yeah. have like the same factories that sell the anti stuff they'll have like toilet paper with trump's face on it and they're also selling toilet paper with hillary clinton's face on it yep. right and, like, and then whatever else you know and that was my experience with chinese factories too as they'd be making like our silicone objects and then they'd be like oh we've got a big order from disney coming in so we've got to you know <laughs> hold off on it or whatever but it's the same people who make everything you know? it's That's like amazing. yeah That's just uh, amazing. it's got to be kind of weird to be over there on a on an assembly line and watching all these products go by for american like everything we do in this country comes through right. some assembly line over there and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it sucks i think it sucks for everybody you know like it's uh it's time to stop doing i agree I, I wish we could all just come together really I, it it i was telling right. michael this the other day in the car it blows my mind that we as humanity are just can't figure it out like why yeah. don't we yeah. figure it out yeah. the, what the, i don't understand what the function of the un is when they don't figure shit out no, we are, we're all on one planet. Yeah. We Why don't we change. just play to each other's strengths? China and those Asian countries, y'all have the electronics. America yeah. can do hardware. You know, France can do yeah. 
yeah. languages. Right. I, like, just figure it out. But, yeah, but like understand. everybody can do everything now because of information technology. So I mean, I think yeah. that that's that's what we have to be doing. Is part of that's part of why I'm so interested in the Chinese internet and getting more connected to Chinese people because. What you really want is not to be like, fuck China, let's make stuff in the US. What you want to be doing is we want to figure out how to connect Chinese, because there's people in Shenzhen having the same conversation we're having, mm, right? Mm, like there's mm. people in China who make stuff out of junk and like, that's huge over there. That was yeah. my first exposure to all this stuff was in China when I was a kid. Um, like the kids there made all these crazy toys out of, out of trash because they didn't have consumer. That, right. Back in the eighties, they didn't have consumer product toys so much mm. in China yet. They had shitty communist toys that nobody wanted. Uh, <laughs> and then the kids made this amazing stuff from trash. And those kids are my age, right? So they all grew up and then now they're in the consumer society. But like, if we can connect using the internet between the makers here and the makers there, then you, you break that like dichotomy of, you know, trade competition of like, right. we win, they lose. It's not like that. You want to have a situation where you're like, no, no, we're building open source hardware here and they're building open source hardware in Shenzhen because open source hardware is huge in China. Yeah. And we just talk to each other. And then, you know, the trade becomes, if the trade is information, like information. you have to send oil if you want to move shit, physical junk across the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. But if we're just doing these internet connections or like sending each other PDFs, then the Americans and the Chinese and the freaking you know, all these other places that we don't have to be everybody all over the world. We start to make these networks, you know, I, you know, like, like, like this network of, of scrap people. If we can get a scrapper in Oregon to talk to a scrapper in Wisconsin, then what, what, what does it take to get a scrapper in Ghana or a scrapper in Pakistan into that network? Yeah. Because they're doing the same stuff, yeah. right? So it doesn't take that many. You get one person in Wisconsin, one person in Oregon, one person in Ghana, one person in Pakistan, and one person in China. And I, I don't know, you know. It's, We've got a really big network that's like a lot of information, a lot of information moving between he, smart people. Yeah. He was pretty knowledgeable about some stuff. He as was well. very, yeah, he was very knowledgeable about a lot of dimensions of his trade. Mm -hmm. Is it metal? Does he work with metal mostly? It seemed like he pretty much took a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he took a lot of big equipment and then parted it out. Okay. So he said he has like big pieces of plexiglass and like oh. lots of plastic to and shred. Aluminum. And like, uh, yeah, lots of different metals. He, oh, I see. Uh, he takes in vehicles as well, it takes them apart. He said and... he had a 50 gallon drum of disc drives. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. were, we were like, does he we got like big hydraulic like, machinery, like uh, like excavators and and backhoes and stuff like that? Possibly, he was saying he has like like I said, those big equipment that we're going to be taking apart, like the six right. ton machinery. So that's yeah, the shredder. Possibly. Yeah, he uh, was talking about several years ago because when he was at the school, they made a gasifier and were able to start it with gasoline. But then continue heating it with just uh, just the fumes. Yeah, fumes from sawdust. Sawdust. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. So very. He was telling him about the pyro pyrolysis thing. Yeah. He was like. Yeah, yeah I don't think he's gonna that. get his shit together in like. I I love what that young man is doing. I love his spirit, but he's got a long research road ahead of him, mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I think, I think it's great. Pyrolysis doing trash to fuel is great, but it already works. It's already been scaled. It's already commercialized. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, the microwave thing is really, really cool. But I think if there's a way to get people doing waste to fuel now using an existing process without microwaves, that, mm -hmm. that, that probably takes precedence because, you know, that's the thing that, that, Comrade Ally was saying too is he's like if I could just have like one tank of gasoline that I could give away for free that's just hugely powerful like people just instantly understand a free yep. tank of gas yeah, yeah. Right. whatever the whatever the method is to get there even if it's kind of tedious like a free tank of gas is so powerful just from a propaganda standpoint and so yeah. the the easiest way to get to that sounds like what you're talking about where it's like you use the fuel you produce to loop back to drive the heat to get more fuel and I mean, why not, right? Like, mm -hmm. that sounds fine to me. It's still a, a much smaller, clo more closed circle than 
using all your gas from another country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, it is gas from another country because the plastic, you know, it's the same process. The plastic's the same companies and everything, but but like it saves it from the landfill also, um, which is huge and, and yeah. presumably doesn't go to microplastics, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Which is in our rain now. Cool. Yeah, just learn that. <laughs> all right. Um, it's in the rain. Microplastics are literally everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. So where, what is the, how long is this fair going? These things go for a while, right? Till Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have Expo through Sunday. When did it start? Yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had judging last Sunday and then Expo opened up yesterday. Okay, okay, wow, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, if there's anything I can do to help, uh, let me know. It sounds like you would like to get the Cube video up. Uh, That'd be awesome to have yeah, that as a supplement cool. to like the class, yeah. just like running in the background. Yeah. And I, what I've been trying to do, so the way these cubes are is I'm trying to like, all I really want to do is get something that people are motivated to copy. I don't even really give a crap what it is. That's what I've been trying to do this whole time. And so I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, but also have like stuff like these, these patterns. Um, and yeah. so the thing about these patterns is that they're pretty easy to make. But they're like, if you try to do it freehand, it's going to kind of be really hard. Like if some, I couldn't do it freehand, maybe some ridiculously talented artist could, but I use tools <laughs> and I like to use my, um, uh, I like to use uh, my, my acrylic shapes, but those don't, that doesn't, I'm trying to get rid of everything that you can't just do with like random trash crap. So this is what I'm starting to converge on is these, these pieces. Because yeah. you can do all your drawings with these, and these are just like cereal box cardboard. Nice. Okay. And so you can, and they're self-replicating in the sense that if I take this, I can hold it up to cardboard, trace it, and cut it, yeah. and then to make a pattern, it's just repeated. Um, you know, it's like tracing, you know, like that. So, okay. so, so each one of these can replicate uh -huh. another one of these, and then this replicates this. And this replicates this. Okay. And so then, and then the cards are self-replicating. So then the other part of the system is that I have, so that I have these boxes and then I've got the cards. Yes. The one side of the card has the stars, the fractal stars, and the other side has just whatever it is that I happen to be trying to replicate. And so, and I'm, and I'm just, I'm just using a pen. So now <clears throat> I mean, I'm trying to like remove all of the of the barriers. So like mm -hmm. lasers, acrylic, <clears throat> buying stuff on the internet, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, robots. I'm trying to get rid of all of that. So now you should you need a ruler, ideally. Mm -hmm. At some you have to be able to get your hands on a ruler. And you have to be able to get your hands on something that's 36 degrees and something that's 30 degrees. But you can do that by tracing off of a screen or printing one piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to use any software to copy the cube and the cards and the shape. <coughs> now. And then the pie crust is the next step for this. And there's the pie crust and like the generic web pages, this mm -hmm. web 1.0 that I've been, I've been re updating a bunch of the web pages with like southplat.net and like maplelawn.net is for this little suburb that I'm in or whatever. I'm trying to have that. So so that the web pages are really, 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 really simple. A web page is just this dumb thing that doesn't even not like trashrobot.org. Like there's not even hyperlinks. It's just like one thing. Uh, okay. And then the pie crust, I've simplified a lot relative to the Geometron hypercube thing that you've seen because now the pie crust, I've got it. So Geometron isn't part of it. And you don't need to do like the markdown part. You can just like there's so there's web, there's media, and there's images. And the images you can you can do it all from a phone, and you can run it on a PC or a Mac or an Android or or, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I'm hoping that this version. I've so I've removed so many things that I'm hoping that this is something that can actually start to spread to like. Mm -hmm people who are not going to do any of this specialized technical stuff i'm trying to separate this notion of there's like the content and there's the network the content's on and yeah, so yeah, yeah we're building all this stuff you know like trash robot stuff or like precious plastics and the pyrolysis all these different trash things that people are doing that's content yeah but the, the network the content flows on has to be so simple 
and so yeah. non-technical that it doesn't you know you want to sort of deconvolve like parts of it have to be technical we want to build mesh networks somebody's got to go out there and like put a thing up on a tower but hopefully even that we can get to the point that it's like commercial off the shelf you know buy this part number and stick it on you know x number of feet above the ground and whatever yeah, yeah. and upload because, this file. because yeah we got to keep lowering that bar <clears throat> and removing tech I want to try to make it so it's okay for it to be like you have to deep dive on the crafts a little bit, but yeah. know, even that should be op optional. And the tech we want to be as like just simple as possible. Beginner off the shelf as possible. He was talking about essentially having like a vetting process because a lot of software people see this and they're like they get really excited, but then they're like they don't like to work with their hands and make crafts and stuff like yeah. that. And those aren't exactly the kind of people we want. We want people who like to get their hands dirty yeah. and make crafts. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. I definitely see that. Yeah, so so it's a little bit of a gatekeeper thing. Where, Speaking about getting like, your hands dirty, wanna talk about worms? Yes, I do. Tell me about your worms. Well, so which worms so, are these? What are you looking so at? So these are the same super worms that we had in the beginning and they right. have begun transforming. So we have like several pupa stages in here. So these are insects, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They okay. have the black beetles are like the adults. Yep. Uh -huh. This red thing is, is is apple peel, so ignore that. Okay, that's food. For the... yeah. Um, but these are like the pupa in pupa, like in transforming stage. He the, fucking the yellowish, all creepy. Yellow He's gonna brown. be a beetle at some point yeah. real soon. What what happens to the beetles? Where? The Once they, the beetles are adults, then they're the end of their cycle, but they can breed. So like we did not realize that if we just like left these guys go, they would start breeding and that's what's happened. Oh. And also what's really fucking cool is a couple of them escaped and started eating plastic. Okay. Like straight yeah. up ate they, some plastic bags. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they escaped their little housing and uh, there were some plastic bags right next to them. And when I was cleaning up, I took the bag away and just noticed all this powder. And I was like, what is this? And then I looked at the bag and it had been chewed through by several of them. So okay. they definitely, that's why we got them. And they definitely did that. Wow. They definitely ate some plastic. So what don't they, I mean, they also eat sawdust and cardboard? So they're in barley. Um, that's what they come the in. Okay. And they eat that stuff pretty easily. But then we also give them like fruits and vegetables. They really oh, okay. love on the fruits and vegetables. So we were kind of using them as a composty thing. Yeah. Um, they don't like, for the amount that we have, we couldn't really keep up on compost. Mm -hmm. But I think if we had a much, 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 much bigger swarm, that might be a different situation. Right. Um, but where did you get these from? pet store local pet oh, store yeah but you have oh, to ask for the people super feed worms them to their feed them to their snakes and stuff yeah yeah, right, yeah exactly just yeah. live super worms super the biggest worms. ones because there's, there's two kinds there, well there's kind of like there's three different like sizes <laughs> oh, yeah. so when when one of them or is it the little yellow one here whenever you touch them they kind of like flip like shrimp <laughs> and they flick their tails and that's when they become active but they're kind of like in a little torpor state Ooh, yeah oh. <laughs> yeah it's like, <laughs> wriggling around like that and then this one is starting to his metamorphose metamorphose so like to kind of dead yeah that one um but anyway what was <laughs> where to get them to figure out, like, the... there's like three different kinds there's like a small medium and a large and the large is yeah. called the super worms and those are the ones that we have the best luck with i think they're darkling beetle larvae mm -hmm. so i think this is a darkling beetle um, yeah do fly fishermen get excited about these have you talked to fly fishermen no possibly they're no. usually with the red wigglers and stuff mm -hmm. They're usually either in the lizard section or in a fishing section, depending on what kind of store you go to. So yeah, I'm kind of awesome. wondering about like commercial, like if we were going to sell worms, whether fishermen, mm. you yeah. know, would be. Because... Chicken people get real excited Chicken about them. People. Chickens love yeah. these things. Chickens like them. Okay, I see. So, so being a worm farmer is like it feels because I just looked at the website and it's eight dollars for a hundred worms. So I feel like if you can breed worms quickly enough. 
You can actually just make money selling worms. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Vermiculture, like, so the red wigglers, they're pretty lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And, like, these guys are a little bit different, but I think there's definitely a market for them. At our well, they're a lot different. They're freaking insect, right? Like, <laughs> sure. does that even count as vermiculture? Probably not. <laughs> um, it's, it sounds like you're raising bugs. <laughs> at our local farmer's market, there are two people who do the red wrigglers and they do not only sell the worms, they sell the, the casings, the casings right. and they sell the tea. Yeah. The tea? Like, compost tea. Compost tea. What is that? It comes from their casings, which is just their poop. Oh. So okay. like it, they kind of have a liquid that drains off and it's super nutrient dense. It's, it's for, very for similar to like stuff. compost tea. Yeah, yeah, for growing stuff, exactly. You put it on your soil in your garden? It's also a pesticide, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. So really, really good stuff for your garden. And wow. I knew a guy who lived in the fifth wheel who had like little shoebox type container, plastic ones. And he had three on top of each other. Each one had 25 red wigglers in it. And he said they reproduced in a couple of weeks. And so he'd just oh. add another one to the top. And like he would sell that's, them out. See, that's what we need. We need mm -hmm. to figure out the modular thing that's like mm -hmm. a box, whatever, whatever it is, whatever combination mm -hmm. of boxes, blah, blah, blah. That you just like it's a it's a it's the incredible secret money machine. You know this book, The Incredible Secret Money Machine? It's, I haven't heard of it, but that sounds great. That sounds a great familiar. Book. Uh, I think that's what it's called. The Incredible, Incredible Secret Money Machine. It's some eccentric guy's um, story about how to make money using various random ass schemes. Um, <laughs> Just like really, really random things. And and I think, you know, it's this idea of like, can you spend, like, how much money do you spend to get to the point that the worms are reproducing fast enough that they're producing X worms per month? And like, what is that in dollars? Like, can I spend $200 so that in three months I'm making $50 a month? You, you know, what? I, like, what what is that? I mean... That's like the same as the pyrolysis. People tr keep trying to pin na nature jab down on that. And then like nobody has an answer. But in the end, like I hate to say it, but like that really does matter. You know, how many even if you're giving your gasoline away, how many gallons of gasoline <laughs> per month can you can you get for how many like, you know, kilos of yeah. whatever waste? And that's the same thing as like, is this a thing we can scale to the point where everybody in our network is like just making a hundred bucks a month as a worm farmer? That's right. Yeah. It sounds like probably, but if it's just a bunch of experiments and then documentation, let's do it. I want to make a hundred dollars a month selling worms. <laughs> I So one of the ideas that I had uh, regarding our system is to help new people, especially breaking it down into roles. Yes, and yes, yes. Making it like a role playing game. So you yes. have your worm yeah. farmer, you have yep. your co yep. trash collector, you have your yeah, yeah, yeah. content creator. Exactly. Yes. Game of yes. Fire builds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roles. This is this has been the, this has been the intent the whole time. Absolutely. And that's that's key and that comes back to this thing about like crafts versus software or whatever is that mm -hmm. like software people in a vacuum are a problem because they run around and do all this stuff and they they're disconnected from reality. But if we can start to build those connections where you get the very crafty person, the very software person, then those two talk to each other enough, mm -hmm. then they become, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And yes. mm -hmm. so, yeah, absolutely. You can have specialization. <clears throat> um, yeah. And that's, it's so hard to start. Like it's easy once that gets started, but it's so hard to start because in the beginning, everyone involved, like the three of us and the people we work with are these like eccentric polymaths, like people who do <laughs> many different things. Yes. And, you know, so you come in and you're like, oh yeah. So you have to write some code and then get out the arc welder and then make a few phone calls and start an LLC and then go, <laughs> the ground, and then go find some mushrooms in the woods and then organize like a little, you know, and it's like you go down. And you have to market it and build some websites. Right, write a website. Yeah, you know, do some stuff with code and, and then some electronics, get out the soldering iron, you know, yeah. maybe get a microscope and look at some some like microscopic organisms. And, and make sure you record every single bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> record all of it, edit it, upload it to YouTube, and then try to get your search engine optimization all filed in. That's, <laughs> 
it's it's hard it's so it hard and yes. like the maker world is full of people who do that because we have to you know that's just normalized in maker culture where everybody's just like oh sure yeah i produced my own videos and then freaking go try to optimize the algorithm. it's just an extension of the hustle and grind culture yeah it is it really is and the way to counter that is to build these networks of specialists and you know but it's tough because we're not starting a company, you know, that's yeah. what companies do. Companies do like, that. You start a company and immediately you put ads out and you're immediately specializing. You're like, okay, we need a, we need an administrative assistant. We need an IT person. We need a custodian, you know, a machinist, whatever. And, and like, you got the money to do it. He and right. I were talking about this yesterday. Cause he had a great idea for like a theme park that was a utopia city. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's awesome. And he was talking about a Hyperloop type system and like just some really, really cool tech, a robot restaurant, all that kind of thing. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. It also sounds very expensive. And right. the problem is sourcing the software engineers that are smart enough yeah. that are so surrounded and insulated at the top of their companies, at the top yeah. of their craft yeah. that are disillusioned, but capitalism realizes that the tech jobs are the jobs that could save us and so for that reason they prioritize them financially so that those people are apathetic mm -hmm. so those people yeah. are not inclined to leave because they are comfortable mm -hmm. sure it's right. bad for everyone else but i'm making 125 thousand two hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year i've got nothing to complain about mm -hmm. part of their issue is how they're in a, like a bubble and then there's like a bubble outside the bubble so like a yeah. lot of these san francisco tech people they're rich and they want to like they say the same kind of stuff we're saying, like they talk all this revolutionary talk mm -hmm. and they, their, their thing that's that, that's just burning man. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's just white people pretending to be indigenous. It's crazy. <laughs> right. Like I, I've, I used to hang out with these, these Bay area tech people who do burning man stuff. And it was, it was like the scale of these projects was insane. They'd pitch mm -hmm. a project and they, oh, yeah. and they would, it was like they a pitch process. All year. And all they, yeah, they do it all year long. Yeah. The country. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a huge thing. They got a budget and they've got personnel. They like they have like a whole structure. Each project is like an org chart and an HR person. And I mean, it's it's really it's really wild. And, and you know, but then they go out to Burning Man and ordinary people. I I'm never gonna go to Burning Man. It's really hard to get out there. And then it's just, and it's like, it just ends up accentuating the the power structure. The because yeah because they You're go there, there and they're like, oh, I went to Burning Man and I did shrooms and met a venture capitalist and now they invested five million in my company and like well yeah no shit because that's what Burning Man is it's mm. it's just like where the the new ruling class goes to get high and make their connections and yep mm -hmm. Just so, cosplay well, you know, a lot of it, and that's the thing is, it's just yeah. social. Is like what you want to do isn't really different. It's just you want to like change the structure of society and that's the trick is to get these people you're a lot closer to san francisco than the black rock desert i think uh speaking I of conventions and stuff i do want to put a bug in here because about i want to say three weeks ago um i i was like we should have a trash con next oh, year yeah <laughs> we should have a convention. You didn't tell me that. That'd be awesome. I know. That yeah. would be awesome. That'd be oh, really crap. fun. Yeah. I mean, we need a trash gonna be a fucking blast. It would be. Yeah. And since you're uh, gonna be in Denver, it's perfect. Yeah, that's the middle of the country. Yeah. So we could get yeah. everyone to converge in Denver. We could. We could that. try to target Denver. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I. I like the idea. I'm super into it. Um, it's gonna be a lot of work. There's, of course waves of pandemic that keep happening which make it a little bit right, right. now we got monkeypox oh, monkeypox right yeah. so so i mean it could be partly <laughs> virtual or largely virtual or 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 maybe even spaced out what if you spaced out a convention across a whole metro area so you don't you don't come to there's no central Venue. venue we just take the map and roll it out and say like we're going to start building shit around denver so like people are going to converge on denver and they're going to build shit but we don't have a convention space just, we just like flash mob style we meet at all the yeah. parks like you've and got like, like a maker at each park don't necessarily it take it down like the world's fair right the world's fair that they left that up for decades in some yeah. cases like in you can go still go see in queens where they built all that world's fair stuff there's that huge world's fair park in queens oh. and so you know we could just say we're not 
going to rent any space. We're not all going to necessarily come together at the same time, except to work together. And then when we converge on a city to do trash con, like, yeah, it's social, but it's like, we're trying to build in spaces where we think we can get away with leaving it there. Yes. And sometimes we're going to have permission and sometimes we're not. But a lot of times I think we will. But that also means you can pitch anybody because that means that you can pitch different people's spaces in different ways or you can be like, you know, me and my friend have been talking about trying to get the REI. There's an REI that like towers over the main river confluence in Denver at Confluence Park. Hmm. And they they kind of use the river as like an extension almost of the store because they use it to sell kayaks and people can like take kayaks from there and go down. They have a little rapids course or whatever. So we've been talking about trying to pitch REI and say like, would you be willing to sponsor extending your Wi-Fi hotspot? Because they already have a Starbucks. They have two Starbucks or whatever. So like, wow. could we get REI to sponsor extending the Starbucks Wi-Fi out into that area? And then if they do that, well, then, all right, so let's build some mesh networks. And then maybe REI can sponsor teaching the local kids how to build the mesh network nodes. That's a cool idea. You know, you know yeah. so that kind of project is what we've been talking about any, but anyway. But if you have it as a con, then that just gives people an excuse to come to Denver. But if they're like, I don't want to get monkey box, you can say, that's fine. You go find somebody to park your RV on their property. And we're all going to do this with like, I drop a thing, you pick it up and we could be running around Denver building ninja infrastructure without ever getting close enough to transmit a disease. Right. right. Yep. And so man, I just added some pictures in the trash gang. I don't think I ever sent these to you. I went up to Bandon, which is a little coastal town up yeah. on in, in Oregon and they have a place called washed away, which is a trash museum trash that's washed up in the ocean yeah. and oh, nice. they separate it by color and make this really 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 excellent sculpture so i just put some of the pictures up because they're fucking cool yeah. but like that yeah. makes me think a lot of what you're talking about like these permanent installations because this has become a thing in bandon that's part of the culture you'll see these trash trash sculptures yeah. all over town and oh, you yeah. know that the museum made them and then you can go to the museum and see their current projects that are going to end up as city art that's cool. really cool. That's yeah. in your area up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about two hours from us. It's cool, cool as shit. Yeah, that's great. I, I, the Trash Magic Network, I think it's a thing. I think we can make it happen. And 100%. Everybody that we talked to about it yesterday was hype. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the reality is, the way I always say it is, like, we're trying to bring more resources to our valley. And we have all of this stuff that's coming to our valley that has value that is not being used. And then it's it leaves. The and, and then right? It leaves. It's and then wild. It you have, that's the thing is they have these like billion dollar factories in China making all this stuff. It shows up in your valley and everybody's valley in the freaking, you know, valleys of the mountains and you know, the other side of the world. It's the same crap from the same factories in China. And then you throw it away and you ship it back out. Yeah, sometimes right. in another country. I mean, some of these oh, things go God. all over the world. People ship stuff across oceans. The trash to, to China. Just trash, it's, exactly. It's, you gotta keep that. Yeah, yeah. People can see it now. I think it's clear. Um, I think so. And, and I like to think of trash broadly as including all the things we can get our hands on for free, like stolen office supplies and just like laptops that are underutilized and things like that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All about the stolen office supplies. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we liberate things on the regular. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in a downtown area with a lot of business people passing by, that like if you get the right that in that in that mode, like business people can all print stuff for free and steal pens really easily. So if you get oh, people absolutely. interested, there's like an in, infinite flow of of stolen office supplies you can get your hands on. And it's All great right. advertising. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And that's what this is all about, ultimately, is advertising is what drives the current network. And we're trying to seize power over the attention. Yes, and that's right. in business is advertising, even though we're not trying to like advertise a project, a product, a company. It's like it's that it's that process that has to be hijacked if you want to seize power from the existing power network it's attention 
It is attention. You're you right. Gotta have, you got to have the things with the explosions and the boobs or whatever it is that gets people. <laughs> we watched Team America World Police yesterday. It was just the first time that? I'd ever seen it. He'd seen it, but I had not. I was like, yeah. wow. <laughs> I, I imagine it doesn't really, like, yeah, I don't. I saw it when it came out. I can't imagine what that's like to watch now. <laughs> you didn't just, age. You just, didn't age well. You just shake Too it accurate. It's still like, wow, wow, wow. Oh my God. Like, yeah. You know it's satire the whole time, but it's so dumb. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so America does things. It is. Mm. It is how America does things. Yeah. Wash it up. Yeah. It's very freedom uh, is the only way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're they're good. Like the those guys can write a catchy song. Oh my god. The they did it with the South Park catchy. movie too. A lot of those yes. songs really get stuck in your head. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you're gonna be living close to that uh Cost, oh, yeah. Casa Bonita. Yeah. Casa Bonita. Yeah. Casa Bonita. Like five Bonita. blocks from Casa Bonita. <laughs> so and they own it now. Like the two of them and some celebrity chef own it and mm. but the, it's closed so we'll see what they do hopefully not make it so expensive that it's not fun to go to anymore but right we'll see it would be nice if they had like edible food the <laughs> bonita experience was not easy on the stomach in the past <laughs> it was like really generic very, very like american mexican like extremely <laughs> american mexican food like just velveta cheese and oh. like not, not good very yeah. not good so and there's only like i think two choices i think the choices were like you get the the beef or the chicken were the two choices <laughs> and then so it, yeah, it, it could use a lot of improvement. <laughs> we, uh, Hopefully that celebrity chef has some Latin ties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or something. I mean, it doesn't have to be like necessarily super authentic or, or anything, but it would be nice to have some flavor and <laughs> higher quality cheese and meat. We Being at the fair, um, you know, fair food is... Just, uh, we want yeah. to start we want to make our own food truck specifically for fairs and we're going to call oh. it culinary appropriation <laughs> and nice. we're going to sell spa water and which is agua fresca and sausage tacos hot dogs and uh let's see what was it lentil wraps yeah. which are falafel yes. all the things that white folks have appropriated we're looking for some yeah. good like oriental cuisine yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. Literally, there's oh. literally a food truck at our county fair right now that's called the oriental food truck oh wow oh, yeah. oh, okay and then and then indian fried bread fried with a d so in, so insulted. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. It's bad. It's yeah, so I actually really love when there's the f fusion food trucks. There's a there was one in New Haven called the Bengali burrito truck. Ooh. And so fusion that's like, absolutely from India, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've like, yeah. taken the burrito truck. They they like taken the logistics of the Mexican burrito truck and just dropped indian food onto it and you it was love amazing that. yes love that so but, much but yeah, I I quite a tortilla it was that like some of those indian flatbreads that are like almost a tortilla but yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh man that was good we had the and best when it's done with you know what when one culture that is not this color yeah, and yeah, another yeah. culture exactly. takes, yeah, takes yeah, the culture. exactly no no that's right there were no <laughs> white people involved in this transaction there, <laughs> there was a korean taco truck also that was like that, that we are like, the ones that ruin it because we go yeah. wow that's really flavorful yeah. but you know it upsets my tummy so i need to add a bunch of cream, cream. yeah <laughs> cheese it up <laughs> yeah no, uh, oh it's so bad uh there's a restaurant in california called sushi rito that does uh sushi burritos and they're fucking awesome as well there's a place in in uh phoenix that i didn't believe it when i first heard it it's chinese and um mexican mm. fusion mm -hmm. and i was like that sounds like it could be really good or really bad yeah. and it was really good and it looks really bad when you walk up it looks like the slummiest grossest yeah. hole in the wall yeah. mexican food that you've ever seen but like it was good. Yeah. I was really yeah. impressed. <laughs> in Orlando, there's one called Taco China. 
and it like the art was just awesome it was like day of the dead mixed with uh traditional chinese like oh, relief yeah. wall art and i was like wow, wow. yeah, it was yeah really cool. i mean i will say i do think america has some of the best food in the world like we talk about all the shitty sort of white people cuisine in this country but like the other cuisine is so well developed like like yeah. we have the korean food here is amazing like there's yeah. all these different enclaves and it's like you go to other countries and like yeah okay they have some indonesian food in the netherlands or or like certain place but but it's not like here where there's just like enclaves from everywhere yeah you know, it's true. like different parts of africa and different parts of south <sighs> asia and stuff like that that's just like i don't think that's true in most countries you know where they'll be like Indian no. food because there's a bunch of Indian shipbuilders, but then there's like nothing else. Right. Like yeah. That. I haven't traveled yeah, in there in over yeah, Street, but... I had a friend named Chadwick and he went to Ireland to get a burrito. And for salsa, <laughs> it was just ketchup. <laughs> yeah, oh <God. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. that's the thing is like, we've got some bad food here, like really <laughs> fucking bad, like horrifyingly just, just like, food that isn't food right or whatever <laughs> but, yeah. but but then like because we have so many immigrants there's always an enclave somewhere of somebody who just brought their food with them and so then yeah they, someone else grab grandma they could cook and they opened a the kitchen yeah. yeah yeah and they just they just blow it up and, yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah that's true that's true our area has a surplus of mexican food mm-hmm surplus of bad Chinese food, some right. really good Polynesian places. Right. And oh, some... pho. we found a really good pho place. Yeah, we found a great Vietnamese spot the other day. We've got some great Thai food and even in a little tiny town. We're always complaining about it because we've hit all the spots a dozen times and they all yeah, have like yeah. one thing that we like. But That's, yeah, you're right. There's no here, shortage. Though. We are like, oh, we've been to all the places, but there's a lot. Of <laughs> you're in Boston. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um so all right this is all very exciting let's you still haven't let, opened we, your laser cutter right what you still haven't, I still haven't opened cutter? it no i'm gonna i'm gonna open it in denver and i think i think my goal with it is gonna be to make the the geometron is to just like wipe instead of use the software to figure out how to make it a geometron robot and then just do whatever and like i'll do the laser <sighs> But then also have that be to experiment with like putting a Dremel tool on it or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, Hell yeah. yeah. And that's why I was asking about your scrap guy if he gets really large machinery, because I would love to take the like the thing, you know, where you use the nail and you poke. Yeah. But just like with an excavator. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> it's like, so it's like, you know, 20 feet high and it's like poking a, a hole that's a foot deep in the dirt. I that just is- told Michael yesterday, can you imagine a like dumpster sized trash robot yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy shit yeah right see that's the th- that's the kind of thing that all we need is time and people like it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of money it doesn't right. take any new technology it doesn't take we just if we can get people's attention like if that scrap guy this is what i was trying to set up with with comrade alloy in wisconsin we should keep trying to figure out is how to get interns young people yes. to show up and connect and those teachers guys. He's got so, a whole connection. So he's got a connection with students. So that's 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 what we were missing with in Wisconsin is is that if we can figure out a can, but but yeah, if we can get people, if we get this is this is my experience with high school interns as well. I didn't have that much time to spend with high school interns, and I'm kind of you know hard to get a hold of sometimes. So I'm not a great intern person, but they got they just get stuff done. You know, once you point them in the direction, like we can just do stuff. And that's true of building the giant robots, the building the tiny robots, because we can also, you know, with the DVD drive, you can get like micron scale precision. Right. So yeah. we can be scaling this down and some kids senior science fair project can be to print all this stuff like on the width of a human hair using that thing. Uh, like you could yeah. do that. Right, that would be a solid, super solid senior science fair thing, and be like, I'm printing, you know, in an organic material, like on the surface of a mushroom. You're making little pokies. This guy has like a whole shop class that he teaches, and he took them to nationals this last year. So he was showing us all the shit 
from like the nationals, like the metal sculpture and shit. Just okay. like he was so proud of his little shot students. Yeah. And so like, and what he was really excited about and the guy before that told us about him, he was like our first connection to this guy. He was like, this guy's students just want a project. They're just looking for a project. Yeah. They're looking for something to build to take to nationals. So any of this kind of stuff that's really oh, like on the yeah, cusp is can, what they're looking if for. If he's got kids ready to go, I can just dole out projects. I've got mm. stuff all stacked up here. You know, we can do the big robot, the small robot. I mean, I have to think about it a little bit, but I have, and there's software too. Like a lot yeah. of this Geometron stuff, that can be a paper. Like a, a kid who can take Geometron and create some piece of self-replicating code and then write a little computer science paper about that. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, I have so much research here and my plan has been my big plan is to figure out how to get an academic position and then hire student, you know, college and graduate students. But high school is great too, if there's yeah. another way to do it. Like I have got projects, I just need people. Um, these projects are ready to go, so yeah. This Robots this fair are. has been, I mean, the, just the first day of connection was really awesome. The, any yes. of the interactions that we put energy into paid yeah. dividends. Wow, we got man. some really good connections yesterday that we're really, really excited about like following up on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's exactly the people that we're needing. That's awesome. He's got a hundred watt laser at the shop. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was me, like, ooh, yeah. this guy was, really just, cool. he was just rattling off his toy list and we were like drooling. <laughs> yeah, because he got a CNC? Yep. Mm -hmm. Plasma. Plasma CNC. Oh, wow. Jeez. Okay. Well, that's really cool. Um, All the welding shit. Just a full metal shop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's something to make microwave pyrolysis go is that that kid's working all by himself. He was about that project too. Yeah. Because he, he was knowledgeable about the past and he was the one that told us about the college and the, the truck that they had previously gotten working and was like really liking what the guy was, what we were talking about. He uh, yeah. also showed me a picture of a catalytic converter from a, I believe he said it was a two and a half ton truck. Uh -huh. And it's like metal that's this thick. And he said that would be a good thing to turn into a pyrolysis with the microwaves yeah. because the metal could absorb the oh, heat yeah. and- Okay, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the kind of connection that like, you know- He's been increase... doing this since the 70s. He's, he's working all by himself. That mm -hmm. guy in Georgia is working all by himself and-, and if there was some way to connect him with a team that had resources, he's got so much energy and talent, but not a, and I think he has some money, obviously he has some money because he's got like some tools and stuff like that, but not much. Like mm -hmm. yeah. it wouldn't take much to increase the amount of work going on in that project by 10 times like, like that with just a few people and a little bit of money. And it would make a lot more progress because he's got all these people in his comments and and then he's got his discord or whatever but that's not the same as having people who are building stuff yeah that's right because he's going about it this way but if he wanted those people on the discord to be a part of it i yeah. think and people have talked about this to him before it's just like you need to release the plans that you have or the earlier least, plans the earlier yeah, plans yeah he's trying so to like we, climb the next mountain yeah. Mm -hmm. and he he's, he's got to... that bootstrap mentality. He's coming out of the school yeah. system. He's got yeah. that, like, I don't yeah. want to be a cheater. I don't want to plagiarize that. I mean, the school, the school teaches yeah. that, you know, yeah. that as well as anybody. So. Yeah. 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 No, that's the, that's the plague of science. I mean, that's why I'm quitting my job at the end of the day. I think that that's why, because I pitch this kind of stuff to people at my job and they're all on board, but they can't do anything about it. We can't get support to do this kind of work because it isn't new in that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of his thing is like, I invented microwave process, la, la, la. Everybody's all into it. Oh, he's such a genius, la, la, la. But like, but the whole point is that the, like, if you already have a process for just using the excess gas to loop back and make more gas, you're done. Right. You don't need to invent a new thing. And I know right. how much that, but when you're in an environment as a professional scientist getting paid yep. to do science, you can't get paid to do a thing unless yep. you make it sound new. Yeah. And so then what's what it, but all the but all the problems, every problem the three of us talk about, they're not new, you know, it worms. So you're you're figuring out how to grow worms. I mean, this stuff isn't new. And that's <laughs> 
problem is that you can't, nobody will support you materially to do the thing that isn't new. Because capitalism only breeds innovation. It doesn't breed yeah, solution. Innovation, right? And so if you can't innovate, then you just keep painting stuff a different color and call it innovation. And that's yep. that's what's happened. It's that's crazy. So like, right. I got to, when I get out of this job, which is real soon now, I'm going to say some things about this place where I work and like why, like, it's it's like everything is social media now because they forced us in this new building. Mm. It's the whole inside of the building is just empty space. It's just a giant cavernous, like five stories of completely empty space. And then it's rimmed with these like walkway areas and there's nothing there. So uh, not office space, how creative. not lab space, not meeting space. It's just empty space. And then they took away all of our offices. So we've got these open plan office space things that are just like desks back to back with no cubicle dividers even. Let me and guess, then, they were trying to like create a culture? Yeah, that's what they said. But here's the truth. The truth is we're a movie set. And so the real product <laughs> of science now isn't the science. The product is the experience that you deliver to people in power. So like when the governor of Maryland came to our new building for a dog and pony show, the product is the experience that the governor has when he comes. And that experience is one of, oh, oh look at this new building. It's, it's, you know, they're building these climate command center where they're gonna have a thing like a movie where there's like floor to ceiling screens with like all this, this stuff. So they can be like, oh, we're really, we're on top of the climate. We got a whole wall of screens here. But it's it's all it shows just for show. What and the fuck? Because that's the thing. Because that's why that's why you see. I think that's what capitalism has become, and that's such an interesting indication of like what I'm seeing with the division in wealth. Right? There is this division that's happening where the upper class is just gaining more and more and more of the power, and yes. just becoming more and more and more the the power holders and really like slinging that power around in a really interesting like yes yes that's really exactly it. so it's right so you've got these people who have power and then the only thing that matters is whether those people give you money or not I and mean, that was my yeah. experience with with being a business owner as well is that like we were really good at selling our product to the customer but the only way to survive is to get rich people to keep writing you these large checks to do growth that that like, so even though, because because as soon as you get a little bit of rich people, the way the whole thing is structured is that you have to have exponential growth, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. You can only get exponential growth with a steep rise by getting more checks from rich people. So even if you're like making money at some level, like you spend $50 in parts to sell a $200 product, you still have to keep getting rich people to give you money. So this is why you end up with these companies that are structured in such a way that like, that's what they're optimized for mm -hmm. is like, you have to get. And so with a place like APL where I work, it's not rich people. It's the military industrial complex, but it's, it ends up being kind of these oligarchs who hold power. That's very similar. It's a little bit different. It's government. Mm -hmm. but it ends up being the same basic process, which I think we've been maybe the whole time actually, but now the media, you have this loop where like the military brass are all consuming the same clickbait media as everybody else. And so your thing only gets funded if the military brass see it as being part of that, you know, their minds are looped into the clickbait. So like, that's so fucking crazy. It's all yeah. fantasy. I mean, I used to live by the Pentagon and see those billboards in the Pentagon Metro from the defense contractors. And they're just wild. They're selling fantasy. I was, there was a lucky billboard that said extraterrestrial dominance. And then it had this like crazy picture of space and a bunch of like spacecraft and stuff. And it's like, I mean, this is some real science fiction nonsense, like extraterrestrial dominance. Those are literally the words on the billboard. And that's like what you see when you get off the escalator. If you're a senior general, like five star, four star general, what you see on your way to work is this billboard that's ex extraterrestrial dominance and has some space shit on it. And then like, wow. you know, just down and be like, oh, I'm a serious four star general, la di da, but you're seeing these fantasies in front of your eyeballs yeah. 
on your way to be a serious four-star general? Like, who's really in charge there? Right. I don't know. It's Lockheed. Fucking crazy. Yeah, Lockheed's in charge. Mm -hmm. And Northrop and Honeywell and Raytheon. And yeah. Uh, Halliburton and the yeah. Amazon. Yeah, and now Amazon is all in the NSA. Like, a, there's a huge amount of what happens at the NSA now is Amazon contractors with a top secret above top secret clearance. Oh, and that's, that's really that's creepy. Funny. Like, I don't know what they're all up to, but I've, I overhear things concerned. at the coffee shop here from intelligence community people. Um, so it's not classified, whatever. They want to talk about it in the coffee shop. It's not classified. Fuck it. Right? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, like I heard some guy talking about like a huge number of separate contracts at Fort Meade now that are Amazon. What the fuck are they doing? I don't know. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's really sketchy. And the Amazon That's HQ2 horrifying. is where we used to live now in Crystal City. So it's like, basically there's Reagan Airport and then Amazon HQ2 and then the Pentagon. There's, there's a giant Whole Foods in between those. So, so there's like Amazon, Whole Foods, the Pentagon and the airport are all one giant. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. What a confluence. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a good Whole Foods. Yeah. It's a good Whole Foods. <laughs> I used to go there all the time. <laughs> That's places. absolutely nuts. That is. Yeah, wow. people have no idea. Like the the menace. If people think, oh, Amazon. Yeah, they have like all this delivery of goods. Mm -hmm. But AWS, not only you know the Amazon Web Service is not only like the landlord of the internet, but they're 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 hiring a lot of people with TSSCI like above top secret clearance now. Mm -hmm. Next to the Pentagon, like to do what? Like what the fuck? What this used to be a bookstore? Like how did you go from being a bookstore to yeah. being like contiguous with the Pentagon, hiring right. people with top secret clearances? Right. Fuck? Like that's what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, it's not. It's and they own the Washington Post. It, well, Bezos owns the Washington Post. Oh. So that's that's a coup i mean yeah 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 mm -hmm. where, like, people are like freaking out about some these are the oligarchs that we're uh, yeah talking but about. like the the quiet coup is that it's that wow you know that's they, they, fucking alarming they're in charge the tech yeah. tech people are in charge to a large extent so it's, yeah it's, it's 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 alarming yeah it's it's really alarming it's them the technocratic uh, oligarchy is already here. Yeah, and then that coup attempt by the right-wing Republican types was mm -hmm. 4chan. To a large extent, I think that was a 4chan project. Yeah. <laughs> there was 4chan memes there. So you've got like Amazon versus 4chan as like politics in America now. That's, oh my God. Horrific. Weird, weird That's world. Really, really, really it's, idiocratic. It's really insane. I don't understand how it got like this. Man. How did we get here? Did we get yeah, here? we're the only country without corruption because we call it lobbying. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's just legal. I mean, I think that's why we don't have as much organized crime as a lot of other. <laughs> You know, yeah, like yeah, we no... don't need organized crimes when we have government consultants. That's right. Yeah, and it's just so easy to do a scam business legally. Mm -hmm. You, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I talk to, you talk to European people about like car theft, mm -hmm. and they have people in Europe who are like doing car theft at a corporate level that like really have their shit together. They have like barges that go from one country to another with, but like if somebody steals your car in America, it's just some drunk teenager probably because. Right. Because the kind of person who's running this the mob car theft operation in Europe and America, there's like so many ways to be a, a shady businessman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just go into like the the pharmaceutical drug negotiation business. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just so illegal. Or, or like just military contracting. I mean, military contracting is so corrupt. The things, yeah. the things that that I've seen in this world, it's and heard i mean it's crazy it's so corrupt there's a movie called i really? care a lot and it has peter dinklage in it and okay. i forget her name but this fucking movie will upset you very much okay <laughs> it's it's really good it's a really good movie but the the portrayal of how real this business is 
and I just didn't know existed, but this is what people do. You're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> These, <laughs> it's so upsetting. If you get a, about an hour and a half, I care a lot. I care a lot. Yeah. I, I watch this. Yeah. I think it's on Netflix. Actually. Yeah, it was on Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Check that out. It's such a fun. Yeah, it is on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's fucking good. Oh, it's fucking good. Yeah, that's one of the most most corrupt industries right there. That is, I, thank you for remembering that. Mm-hmm. It's the personal conservator to be a personal guardian or personal conservator over an aged person, which like, if as a person who is about wealth transfer from the boomer generation to millennials, I appreciate that aspect of this career choice, but like, that's it, is to transfer wealth out of the old people's hands and it's Uh, fucked. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, everything. I mean, this is the thing about money is that it just keeps building up all these structures around it that, like it's all it's it's like corruption it's money i really think money is the problem like money there's no like you can't solve any of these problems like money you can't solve the problems money created with money money yes yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It, it it's started out as an energetic money. concept of currency yeah. it did it, yeah. it started out as as a trade an ethical trade yeah. system of like yeah. energy and uh, effort and that kind of thing but the printing of it in infantitum has yeah corrupted it beyond use yeah it's it's not it's not working it's not working right now um so yeah no i don't we have to be able to i mean but but we need money right now but this is this comes back to like the worm farm thing is figuring out ways that you can like take the thing that doesn't have any inputs and have that spit out a little bit of the money. most simple um, solution it's so frustrating to me but the most simple solution is just like is um disparity regulation it's not about like capping how much the top people can have yeah but it's about capping how much the top people can have relative to the bottom people in their company like we're just saying you shouldn't make two thousand dollars more or two thousand times what your lowest employee is making and it's like that's the basic easiest way to just roll some of the shit back to just make it somewhat fair for the rest of us. Cause you're right. We do need money on some level at this point in time. We don't have a yeah. fair way to change it up, but the the hoarding, the beaver dams, as you put, that we have put the, these 1% have put in place to just gum up this whole system will bring down our whole fucking planet because we've combined it's, that yeah. with the infinite growth model. Exactly. I don't know if yeah. you're familiar with the new economic model that I only recently heard about called the donut economic model. I, don't know I saw something somewhere about it. Um, really interesting idea where like you want, you have your donut and your donut is kind of based on your population and the resources available in your area. And that is the ideal growth framework. You don't want it to shrink below a certain amount and you don't want it to balloon above a certain amount. So like, it just, it makes so much sense rather than this fucking exponential scale going upward that we currently in, fucking fantasize about yeah, that yeah. doesn't exist yeah. in nature mm-hmm. the donut economic yeah. model there's a few countries who have okay. decided to actually adopt it as their principle and i think it's going to make a big difference for those countries and it would for all of us if we just made a concerted effort to stay within our fucking means yes yeah, exactly make loops mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting you've got two different kinds of loops right you've got the you got the loop around the hole and then the loop around the right yeah there's there's actually two other kinds of loops there's one that goes like through the hole and then like inside there's there's a type of circle that goes um both around the donut and also if you have a diagonal circle it can go around the donut and through the donut I think I can picture it. It's, it's like one of those little brain brain teaser hoops. Yeah, and you can do it right-handed or left-handed, which gives you actually four different kinds. Of, I so I spent I did a research on sort of donut structures. <laughs> the fucking donut yeah. economics theory with a physicist. I, I, was, I don't know anything about economics, but I know some things about donut structures. I spent I spent like I did research in undergrad for like a few years actually with a math professor on. Um, 
kind of the the math of of a certain type of Taurus, uh, which right. is essentially a donut, and like and yes. then embedding them in higher spaces. So you had like we were embedding the Taurus in a curved three dimensional space, which you can embed in a four dimensional space. So it was this whole, and then you project those tori down into three dimensional space and get these different like funny shaped tori so yeah. i spent a lot of time for quite quite a while actually spent a, a lot of time making different like pictures of funny shaped tori that were projected so fucking a i wonder if you would be into That's vortex really interesting vortex based mathematics yeah, that was a whole thing, right? Like in the end of the 1800s, I think, mm -hmm. um, was when that happened. Yeah, there have been some very interesting sort of mathematical trends that come and go where people take these geometric things like quaternions. There was a whole like cult of quaternions. Oh, um, what is it? <laughs> a quaternion, so you know complex numbers, you, you have like the real and imaginary component. Mm -hmm. So like, so so I is the imaginary number, the square root of negative one. And so then you can make the complex number is where you have like uh, the real and imaginary component of a number. And so you'll have a certain multiple of i and then some number and the two of them, it's in a plane. And so quaternions are extensions from that up to this four dimensional space that's really useful for rotations. So oh. I, think, I think rocket people care about quaternions maybe as like a way to make the equations work. There's like certain ways that when you just write down the equations of like the different angles of motion of a mm. rigid body, that those equations can get weird things that are really frustrating that kind of blow up your models. And so quaternions <laughs> let you use this higher dimensional space to just like make those equations less pathological to not have these weird <laughs> things. And so I think rocket people are <laughs> for that. There, um, that's wild. <laughs> uh, we came across a game demo uh, a couple of months ago uh, where the, this guy took Minecraft and created this game around it where you're still traveling around in Minecraft, but then you have a four dimensional space variable. And what you, it, the world just starts rotating and reveals new parts of the world basically you take a snapshot oh, wow. of whatever's in front of you yeah. and then you walk into that snapshot no, 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 different one. That's a really different one. oh okay sorry I was thinking yeah. that wrong. <laughs> um this one rotates the world ro rotates you around the world to reveal new data but the game that she's talking about is also something awesome it was supposed to be what portal the game portal from um i forget what their name is but aperture i think is what it is um yeah the simple game you shoot one thing and then you shoot another thing and you can walk through the portal to the other side whatever but the game that was supposed to come after that you're you literally have a camera and you take a picture and it comes out as a little uh snapshot, snapshot and then you place that somewhere else and you can walk to the picture that you just took it's like pretty mind bending and <laughs> like, really crazy just remind me of the fourth dimension stuff but that's yeah. all very yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. It's 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 fun, and um, yeah, I, I got a lot to say about that. But uh, so I think we have a lot of good plans here. I'm gonna try to get my video up of the replication of the cube mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'll do the class tonight, and then I think TrashCon in Denver as like a gorilla, you know, di socially distanced city decentralized. We're just going to call it a decentralized yeah. convention. An anarchy yeah, yeah. Convention. And so you can do it anywhere. Anarchy. But I think I think the idea, yeah, I mean, maybe we don't even travel. Maybe you just say like TrashCon is the whole world, but we're going to like coordinate building this stuff. And then so look no, up that's, that's, the that's game better. of mushrooms. I don't want to ask people to come to Denver. Let's there's just... this international game called the game of mushrooms. And there's like a, a day and every like it's it's become something that started on Instagram and he'll announce it like six months in advance, what day it's going to be. And makers from all over the country who make whatever they make, make mushrooms of what they make and then hide it in, in town. And so it's this really fun scavenger hunt. I yeah, went all the way to Ashland yeah. and found myself yeah. a little fucking 
the hip, the person that he used to laser cut with put out like a dozen mushrooms. And so on his Instagram, he put out hints to where you could find these mushrooms in nature. And I found mine in the bushes at a park and it was so much fun. And so like that kind of model. Well, would well be can we just use cool. their network? Can we awesome. like, what's a mushroom? What is a mushroom? Like just an actual mushroom. Well, I Oh, the actually. one that you found is laser cut. Yeah, like my laser cut. A, like a laser cut mushroom. But people, right. for example, if your craft is felt, you just make a felt mushroom. And oh, then you well, we can make the. I mean, we can make cardboard mushrooms. Yeah, like exactly. I can, make, yeah. I can make a stack of these to be a mushroom. So, so yeah, we yeah, can yeah. launch this on on their network. Like this doesn't. We don't have yes. to make our own version of it. What, what, the game what of mushrooms. It? Check them out on Instagram. Game of mushrooms. We can totally ride on that. Let's let's do that. Uh, Game of mushrooms. I need to invent stuff. Let's see. Game of shrooms. Is it game of shrooms? Is that the it same might thing? be that? Yeah, that might be them. Yes, scavenger hunt, June eighth. Mushroom game of shrooms. Game of shrooms. Here we go. Game of shrooms is a once a year worldwide art and seek created by Adabar. The next. Game of Streams is June 11th, 2022. So, okay, so they just had one. Uh, yeah, okay. This, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a while before they do this, but it seems you like can be we prepared. could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do this. All right, cool. Yeah, the Trash Con next year, sometime yeah. between Trash spring and... Spring and yeah. summer when the weather's nice. Yeah, maybe we should do Denver. Maybe I mean it's not really a con. I don't know. I get my mind goes in funny, but yeah, we could we could we could do it. And do all the things. Yeah. It's, we'll it's do all the things. But because if we're just because we're just building stuff, we're going to be doing that whenever. Like like that's not a that's not a, like an event implies that people actually do come to Denver, which would be useful because if we can get people to come, people are going to be able to bring different kinds of stuff. Yeah. And that can be huge. You get somebody who's a glass blower who has their glass blowing torch stuff, and just like that's a whole thing, yeah, you, you know, or something like that. Um, so yeah, getting people to show up would be pretty good. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Yeah, let's, let's spring, I think like April or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's 422. Ha! Four twenty 20 in Denver is crazy. It's not. It's yeah, yeah, like yeah. We'll get all the real creative college types. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, we could, we could have a four twenty Denver uh, trash con. I, I could see that because there's just going to be so many people there anyway. Like the four twenty brings a crazy number of people out, and so that might just be a way to to market. Um, yeah, I could see it. The more I think about it and all the mushroom stuff and everything, doing doing like a 420 like that week in Denver feels like the right kind of insane. Like because then we just don't even try to organize anything because there's so many people who are already doing events that you just piggyback on that. Right, mm -hmm. right. We just yeah. flash mob places. Yeah, yeah, they... yeah, yeah. And they're already there. People are already there. And people are already like trying to sell shit. Like it's the 420 is crazy commercial so mm -hmm. there's like lots of opportunities to kind of get the word out about stuff Fuck yeah sweet sounds perfect oh man cool. well, right. enjoy your class tonight down. we'll we'll look forward to seeing your video up tomorrow yeah. and yeah awesome take a look at it before we teach our class all right i'm so excited <laughs> all right, all right. Later, later. Later.